Dear Professor Pollock, thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. That we had you here in our conference. Uh, we learned a lot uh, of your knowledge about the EC water. That's very challenging. And it's not so much in the mainstream physics right now. What do you think would be your knowledge of what you detected in 10 years' time? Um, a very interesting question. Um, well, first of all, philosophically, um, you say it's not in the mainstream in physics or chemistry, and I think that's accurate. Um, the, the physicists and, and chemists have, have, for the most part, uh, ignored the presence of easy water. And this is actually very typical of, of findings that appear to be somewhat revolutionary, that challenge the, the status quo. H history has shown that, that uh, uh, people, don't, people in academia don't easily pay attention or accept uh, ideas that challenge the, the mainstream point of view. It's a kind of um, um, uh, upsetting to one's sense of security. You know, we, we have belief systems that we, we um, abide by and make us feel comfortable. And when someone comes along and says, oh, you know, this, this may be entirely incorrect, it feels uneasy. And so, so scientists share the same uh, human foibles as, as, as everybody else. And there's a reluctance to accept anything new. It was, it was uh, Albert St. Georgi, who, uh, the, the father of modern biochemistry, who said, um, who said that he knew when he had, uh, he won the Nobel Prize, of course, and discovered vitamin C, he knew he was on to something important when the reactions were polarized. You know, when when you have people who are so excited about it, and other people who say this is nonsense, then you know you're on to something important. We've had some of that reaction. There have been a few people who have said, uh, "Oh, it can't be," and and have written papers to suggest that what we found is is just doesn't exist. It it, it can't be. On the other side. There are groups of people who are extremely enthusiastic, and and the enthusiasm comes it comes um, it comes mainly from from uh, people who who are really serious about medicine. Uh, I don't mean the the uh, conventionally oriented medical people, but people like at this conference, uh, energy and medicine, and other uh, alternative, complementary, integrative people. They understand that water is absolutely central for for life and and for health. And they understand how important it is to 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 uh, ferret out the the details and concepts of how how the water actually operates. And so, from them, there's been huge enthusiasm, and also from spiritual people who who understand that that water is an integral part of of spirituality. And so those two groups, in, in contrast to some of the academic physicists and chemists who either pay no attention or, or say, this is, just can't be, it's, it, it's impossible, those other groups are really enthusiastic. And of course, it's wonderful at a conference like this to present material to a, a group of people who are open-minded and receptive. So I, I just wanted to speak to the kind of resistance that is absolutely normal when someone comes forth with, with a finding in any scientific field that challenges the, the established thought pattern. So where is it going to be in 10 years? Um, well, um, I, I guess my, my fond hope is that, is that people will come to realize that, that water is so central to, to our body function and, and our health. And that, that's not the case right now. Um, if, you, if you read a standard uh, bi biochemistry or cell biology book, it's really hard to find the word water in the index. I've tried, you know. So water, what's water? You know, water is, 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 is like the bath, uh, like a bathtub full of the water in which the more important molecules of life bathe. It has no role, no real role. It just sits there as a, as a solvent. And um, everything we know about water uh, challenges that concept. It just doesn't fit. Water, in fact, uh, and I present this in my 2001 book, Cells, Gels, and the Engines of Life, the idea that 
the ordered water or structured water that we now call easy water that is so central to practically every f fundamental, every basic function of, of the cell. It's a, a transition, the trigger for many of these processes is a transition from the structured, ordered water that fills the cell to ordinary water and then back again. These, these are transitions that that trigger uh, biological processes, for example, uh, trigger contraction of muscle or that trigger the, the action potential that carries information in nerve cells or that trigger uh, secretory cells to secrete. All of these involve ordered water, easy water, transitioning in, into ordinary water and then, and then back again to complete the process. So, so we, we, we've learned, as, as I mentioned, Albert St. Georgie knew many years ago, one of, his, one of his famous quotes is, life is water dancing to the tune of solids. And I think he was right. He had many aphorisms, quotes that, that are really remarkable. His insight is, was, was, was really amazing. He was so far ahead of his time. He understood, and other people have understood that water is so central. So. So my fond hope in, in the next decade or so is, is that scientists come to realize how, how central um, water is, is for life. And once you understand that, it's sort of like, you know, understanding, trying, trying to repair your, your car engine and not knowing the principles on which the engine operates is not so easy to do. But if you understand that the pistons are moving back and forth and, 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 and the, the fuel is exploding and pushing, then, then you can maybe more easily figure out what, what goes wrong. It's the same with the human body. If you, if you understand the principles that govern uh, the basic functions, then you, know, you can take a sick person and make a sick person healthy. And, and it's been shown by many people that water, water actually is sort of like a wonder drug. You, know, you drink enough of it and you get better. There's a, a famous famous book by the um, uh, Iranian guy who, whose name sounds suspiciously like Batman. <laughs> it's Bat Mangalish. Yeah, yeah. Who wrote the book? You're not sick. You're you're thirsty. <laughs> And so interesting a, a book. He was a, a physician in Iran, and when the Shah of Iran was was deposed, he was a supporter of the Shah, so he was thrown into prison. And and uh, the prisoners came to him because he was a physician, and they came to him and you know said, "Hey, we're we're sick. We've got this problem, that problem. What are you going to do?" And of course, he had nothing except water. And so he told these these patients, so to speak, political prisoners, "Drink more water." And it turned out that the water was spectacularly helpful in improving their lives. So this is, for me, this is uh, um, so important to understand the role of water and, and the role of having, well, you might call it hydration, uh, uh, sufficient hydration to keep us, keep us healthy. But it's more than, than just, just health. You know, water is all around us and if, if if we understand the nature of water, the fact that water has not three phases, not just solid, liquid, and vapor, but this fourth crystalline phase, then then many phenomena around us begin to be uh, understood. So, one of them is weather and clouds. You know, clouds contain uh, water, and a simple question that people almost never never ask, and so fundamental: what keeps the cloud up in the sky? You know, it's made of water, and water is heavier, heavier than air. And so, in theory, we should all be getting drenched from the clouds, like the morning shower. Um, but something is keeping the cloud up, and, and what's going on? So it's only if you really understand the features of water that you can begin to figure out uh, how this works. This is an everyday phenomenon. We look up, but we never pay attention to to We never ask the question of what's keeping the cloud. And we don't ask the question, what makes it rain? Um, so, uh, uh, understanding the real nature of water and the presence of a fourth phase, which is a charged crystalline uh, phase, uh, provides the basic understanding that, in fact, lets us understand uh, r rather effectively the, the weather, the clouds, and, and how this works. 
and that's going to be in my in in my next book. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I'm not at a point. Anyway, water is all around us. If we want to understand nature, it's necessary to understand water. I think that your your research will intrigue us more and more. Well, I hope so. Thank you. Uh, we we're trying to answer many of the questions that um, involve water and and beyond water as as well. Some of the fundamental features of nature we really don't understand, but we need to understand. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. so Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. This has been a great meeting, and um, you've done an outstanding job putting together some really exciting speakers. Thank you very much. Sure. Pleasure. We had the pleasure. Thank okay. you. Okay.